This is the perfect RIA In case you didn't know Bringing you all the strategies To help your business grow Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Sit back and listen in While you feel the beat, yeah! Mr. and Mrs. Prospect what did the other advisors say when they looked at your tax return? Welcome to another Perfect RA podcast. I'm your co-host, Micah Shalansky, and with me, as usual, the legendary Matthew Jarvis. Jarvis, how's it going, bud? Micah, I am doing good. Excited to welcome in uh, 2023. And yes. uh, this might be naive, but you know, whatever mantra or, or uh, whatever works for you, I always start every year saying, hey, this is going to be my best year ever. Even if I have like some objective reasons to think, well, inflation's a mess and tax increases are looming and, and whatever the case may be, like I'm always going to go from the lens of this will be my best year ever. You know, Jarvis, that's a really cool thing about the new year, right? It allows us to mentally reset. Uh, now, you could do that same thing every month. You could do that same yeah. thing every quarter, et cetera. But the new year, the whole world is kind of around that new year aspect of it. And just allows us to say, yeah, this is going to be my best year ever. And to start off with that, you really got to think about what are you going to do differently, right? If you keep yes. doing the exact same things that you were doing last year and you expect a different result, maybe that's the definition of insanity, right? You got to be doing something different. So what is your plan for this next year? And I know one of the things that we're going to talk about a lot today is tax planning. This is a great thing to be kicking off this year. We're seeing tax planning become more and more predominant throughout the industry, which I absolutely love. More and more financial advisors are stepping up. We're even seeing wirehouses do this, by the way. So if you're an RAA and you think, wow, my differentiating factor is the fact that I do tax planning. Well, guess what? Ed Jones is sending out 1099 letters. Uh, Ed Jones is starting to do more tax planning items, et cetera. So you, no longer does that separate us. We have to up our game. That's why this needs to be our best year ever. That's the reason we need to push this to the next level and making sure we're delivering more and more value to our clients. Like I said, something I want to add on that, and I'm glad you hit that right on the head of, hey, this is a new year. If I want it to be my best year ever, I've got to do something differently. And I think the biggest thing you can do differently is stop relying on willpower, right? So, Ooh, like the, so the worst hard. thing that comes so with New Year, hard. right, is um, the, the, you know, New Year's is often surrounded by New Year's resolutions, which, which are just this enormous waste of time. Like this year, I'll finally have the willpower to go to the gym every week. Willpower is not enough. That's one of our core tenets. So as we talk today about tax planning, what are you going to do besides willpower? So if in your mind you're thinking, this year I'll finally do taxes. Won't that be cute? No, it has to be, hey, this year on January 30th, we're sending out the tax letter. This year we're sending out RMD letters. This year I'm going to attend the Retirement Tax Services Tax Summit. You've got to block them into your calendar now or we'll be talking to each other at the, again at the end of this year. And Micah, you and I will be high-fiving that it was our best year ever. And some people listening will say, well, maybe next year I'll change. Now, I got a couple of commitments, Jarvis, that I'm going to make moving into this year. But one of the ones that I'd really appreciate your yeah. help is, is helping me keep accountable for this, but I am going to start relentlessly grilling other financial advisors. Are you actually doing financial planning for yourself that you're preaching to clients? Are you doing tax planning for yourself that you're preaching to clients? And if you say in your mind, yes, and it's what, Jan, beginning of January, 9th, 10th, something like this, when this is going to air, if you are saying in your mind, yes, I do the exact same tax planning, do you know what your tax bill is for 2022 just yet? And if the answer is no, you are not doing effective tax planning. And I don't want to hear any other excuse after that. So I am really committed this next year to making sure that the pot's not counting the kettle blackie. So often have I heard from other advisors about all these great things they do for other people. Then I look at their own practice, their own finances, their own lives, and they're not doing it. We need to implement the same strategies we recommend for our clients. Or quit, t quit telling about clients, right? Pick one. There's an easy way. If you don't want to do this, then don't recommend things to your client. But if it's good enough for you to recommend to your client, then by heavens, you you should be doing it yourself. Like I'm super relieved that we record these podcasts in advance. I have like this three week leg so I get my taxes <laughs> caught up. No. Actually, I was looking at, at, at mine yesterday, but this is, yeah. You know, if you looked at a client that's a small business owner, like all of us are, right? Who's making the kind of income that we are. Uh, Mike, your point is spot on. Taxes should be reviewed every single quarter. You shouldn't just be making these arbitrary estimates or just hoping it pencils out, right? Tax planning starts I don't say starts and ends, but it definitely starts with you as the advisor, right? How can you go to a client in good faith and say, hey, I recommend this tax strategy when for you yourself, taxes are this afterthought. It's like this wild card in April. You're spinning the, the slot machine, hoping it comes back with refund instead of owing a ton of money. You know, Jarvis, that's one of the things that came out of the, one of our masterminds is you guys found out that I did my own taxes, uh, which you were like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. You should hire somebody, which 
we'll get into that one later. Yeah. Um, and so, but I did, and I went out and hired someone several years ago. They're the ones that are preparing our taxes and going through everything. And we have semi-annual meetings that we go through and we do tax planning for. And that's just, just like we talked about with Joe Lucas's business planning, right? The best part about his business planning is there's a date to do it. And I'm going to show up and I'm going to get my business plan done. That is the best part. His content's great. I'm not knocking it, right? But that is the best part. The best part about me hiring a CPA is not the thousands of dollars I have to pay him to do the exact same job I did. It was the aspect of saying, now I have a date that I have to show up for and be ready for my tax planning and to make sure that I can implement these things. It's a forcing mechanism. Jarvis, back to your point you just mentioned, willpower's not enough alone. We got to create these forcing mechanisms that are out there. Here's an easy one that we see all the time with clients, Jarvis. When do clients, most of the time, when do clients provide their homework that they were supposed to do? Minutes before. <laughs> Yeah, right before their meeting, right. Right, right before their sometimes the night before, sometimes sure. 10 minutes before, sometimes a day before, right? Yep. But generally, it's right before their meeting, whatever definition you're going to have. Uh, I was working with Tracy, who's on our relationship team, working with other advisors. And she's like, Micah, these friggin' advisors, they send their homework in like 10 minutes or the morning of their appointment. Then the first question is, did they say is, did you review did my you? email? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it's the same True. damn thing clients say, just to be fair. Yeah, uh, they send it in right before. And they're like, well, did you get the content? You mean the one you click send? on when you were sitting in the lobby? No, I, I missed that one just yet. I haven't checked it, right? So, but deadlines are that forcing mechanism. That's a value we provide to clients. That's a value you need to set up for yourself. All right, Jarvis, sorry, a little bit of a rant. I'll let you say something. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally on board. I'm totally on board. I'm always like feeling out like, is, is Micah just coming after me on this thing? Is he... <laughs> <laughs> generally, that's what I'm focused on. <laughs> generally, I mean, you're looking right at me this whole time. Uh, so, so for advisor, let's, Micah, let's make this a little more tactical, right? Yeah, so yeah. most of us are getting most of our revenue the first week of each quarter. Now, if your revenue is coming in on sure. some other frequency, that is a good time. So that's, Micah, when I update all my personal spreadsheets, yes. where I'm tracking my income for the year, where I'm tracking my expenses. That's where I'm looking through QuickBooks. Please tell me that you have a decent bookkeeping system in place. Excel. That you're, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if it's detailed, I guess that works. I, I would guess that it's not, right? We've got QuickBooks in place and have had it for years. There's a simple, easy tool to use for yourself and for clients. If you Google 1040 Excel, there's a guy that keeps uh, 1040 up to date every year, just totally in Excel. And one of the things I do, Mike, is I'm comparing year over year. So I'm saying, great, if last year my tax bill was X, where am I tracking this quarter versus last quarter? How does that impact my tax right especially with the markets being down or if i look at 2022 i say wow that was really a great year for income but if i look at my run rate based on q1 it's not quite as good as it was q1 of of 2022 and so these are things you can be looking for and say great if my income is going to be lower my expenses are going to be higher back to roth conversions hey am i Am I putting enough into retirement accounts? The odds are probably not, but we say, hey, listen, do I need to switch to a set plan, right? All of these things we talk about with a small business owner, you need to be having that discussion documented with yourself. Now, if you're not part of a, an enterprise model, one of the things you might want to think about as well. So, Jarvis, I do the same thing. So, right after you know payday once a quarter, yeah. I have my deposits sheet, right? Yes. And that's a simple Excel sheet that has I put my gross income in there, and then has broken out how I'm going to allocate that. So, I'm not changing it every single time. I get X amount carved out for a PD budget. I have a team budget. I have money set aside for taxes for retirement accounts, right? So, I have all of these deductions that come out, all these subtractions that are going to be coming out of that gross number, and it's all based on percentages. So, whatever my income is, boom, these percentages happen. I can move that money automatically. So that's what I do on the personal side. On the team size, because we're an enterprise model, we have a scheduled date at the end of the month of the first quarter oh, sure. because it takes the account a little while to update things, right? And so just as we get more people in there, it's one of the things we realize is, you know what, we can't just go off the bank balance. We got to go off the accounting, but balance it, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, our bookkeeper does by the 10th of every month, she has everything up to date for us. Well, they're fantastic. So our meeting, the soonest our meeting can be is by the 15th of the quarter, right? That's when we're going to have our leadership meeting or then after. So it's all within that same month of the quarter. So January 15th to January 20th ish is when we're going to have our leadership meeting and we're going to have all of our finances updated at that time. So regardless if you do it like the first week, the third week, the, you have to do it right away when you have that information, then make educated decisions about what you're going to be doing going forward. And I'd very much encourage all of our advisors to do everything based on percentages, right? If you stick on, stick on fixed dollar amounts on how much you're saving, well, then guess what happens? Your income goes up, your savings doesn't go up, right? And you create a very bad delta, right? That you're spending a lot more than you're saving, which will cause a problem. 
So I think an action item there, I, I'm not trying to skip to the end of the episode here, but an action item is put that on your calendar, right? Put on your calendar, yes. when each quarter am I doing my financials, including my tax planning? And then if you do not have a bookkeeper, right? If you don't have somebody in your team or outside of your team that's doing your bookkeeping, hire that person. Like that needs to be your action item for this week. Find and hire that person because odds are, if you're doing it yourself, there's probably an entry once a month, miscellaneous credit card expenses, $23,000. That's not helping you. That's not helping you from tax planning. It's going to be a nightmare when you're audited. So if you don't have a bookkeeper, get a bookkeeper in place. Put that tax date on the calendar every single quarter. So Jarvis, you spent a lot of time talking about advisors yeah, right, and yeah. how to add value, which is fantastic, right? And talk about tax planning. You should also be thinking about the Augusta rule, by the way, as you're doing this. So when throughout the year are you going to rent your own house back from yourself? Schedule that out and say, great, here's going to be our team retreat. Here's our events we're going to do. Here's these other things, right? Now it's the beginning of the year. Get that set up now. But Jarvis, let's also pivot and talk about clients as well. So for our target demographics, I know we work with, I work a little bit of uh, self-employed clients, but mainly federal employees that are getting ready to retire, but there's still a a lot of tax planning opportunities that we can do for them. Yeah, surprising number. And uh, where where I got led astray early in my career is I thought it had to be exotic, right? I had to thought mm. it'd be like intentionally defective yes. grantor trust based in the Cayman Islands or some insane thing. Uh, and it's really not. It really boils down to how much are you controlling income year to year? In high income years, how are you pulling it down? In low income years, how are you pushing it up? Mike, I met uh, last week with a client <clears throat> or a few weeks ago with a client. And uh, they were talking about planning for retirement. And they're one of these people who are going to be in a top income tax bracket their entire life, even into retirement, given their net worth, just interest earnings yeah, alone will keep them happen. in the top. And so it was really sitting down with them and their CPA had confused the heck out of them. And I just sat down with them. I said, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you will always be in a top tax bracket. You will always be. So there is no sense kicking the can down the road. It will not be any cheaper down the road. And they had this like epiphany moment, like, wait a second, I never even thought about that. Because I said, I said, hey, listen, Dave and Sue, right? Everybody's Dave and Sue. I said, Dave, are, are you ever going to just give away all your net worth while you're still alive? Well, no, not while I'm alive. No. Okay, cool. You're always going to be in a top tax bracket. We need to plan accordingly. By the way, in two years, tax rates are going up. When the Trump era tax cuts expire, we need to be doing Roth conversions. We need to be harvesting gains. A lot of stuff we need to take care of. Yeah, and that's it's kind of the myth that's out there. And, and I think on a previous podcast, I might have mentioned this. I was talking with a CPA, and that was the biggest thing with them. I want to do a Roth conversion for a client. And the CPA came back in the same thing. It says, hey, the client's in a top tax bracket. In the future, when they're in a lower tax bracket, they should do a Roth conversion. I said, man, that's a fantastic idea. Could you let me know when they're going to be in a lower tax bracket? He's like, I don't know. Maybe when they sell their business. It's like, well, they're not planning on selling in the next 10 years. So when is this going to be? Uh, anyways, we're kind of going back and forth with them. And, you know, he is an advocate of kind of kicking the can down the road. But then meeting with the client, the same thing is like, look, eventually you're going to have to pay these taxes, right? You still want to operate this business into your 70s because they just love doing it. Then we're going to have RMDs plus your business income, which is coming out, plus Social the security. tax codes are yeah. expiring, plus Social Security, right? There's, there's no scenario in here which you keep the business. And you're in a low tax bracket. There's zero. And you want to keep the business. Therefore, we need to do things now even in a high tax bracket. Yeah. We we have to remember, and this is similar on the investing side, right? Our clients are bombarded 24-7 by trade, 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 right? That's that's the entire financial services model, get people to buy and sell, or financial advertising model, excuse me. Uh, taxes, same thing. Everything in the tax world is about kicking the can. And our job in many cases as advisors is to show them that we need to stop kicking the can. Not 100%. We're not going to convert yeah. every dollar to Roth on day one, but we've got to prepare for this. Mike, another one I use all the time, Mr. and Mrs. Klein, at some point in the future, you're going to need a lump sum of money. And I hope, I really hope it's for something fun, like you're going to buy an RV and travel around North America. That would be cool. Or it may be for something less fun, like you need to pull out money for long-term care. In either scenario, if we pull a bunch of money from your IRA at once, you will get killed in taxes. Now, what we want to do instead is eat that proverbial elephant one bite at a time. We want to take small distributions each year so that in the future, we can get that money tax-free. Is that okay with you? I love it. You know, yep. Jarvis, that's the other thing that I add on my presentation to mm -hmm. new clients or when I'm meeting with uh, what prospects and webinars or seminars is I draw out the tax buckets, yes. right? And it says, great, here's your four tax buckets. And then when I'm meeting with a client, I put their dollar amount that they have in each one of those four tax buckets and the ordinary income and tax deferred is right on the top and they can instantly see their top heavy. Then instantly they know they should be diversified, right? So that nice little vi vi visual image right there just shows them that we need to make some changes. So I love that. All right, Jarvis, what are some other things that we're going to be doing this year? Um, 
Um, I know one of the things that we're getting ready for right now that'll go up by the end of the month is going to be our 1099 letter. Mm -hmm. We're going to be sending that 1099 value out. I know we talked about it a lot, but you know, there's a lot of advisors still not doing this, but it's going to go out to every single one of our clients. Again, if you've never done one of these, start small. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make it nearly as elaborate if we turned it into. Every year we kind of up the value on that 1099 letter a little bit more. But if you've never done one, it's as simple as, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, here's a list of your accounts and here's the tax forms that you should be expecting from every single account to get to your CPA. That's just it. I mean, that's a lot of value right there. And that's it. That's all you have to provide. If you want to go further than that, you absolutely can. Yes. And for our Invictus and our Backstage Pass members in the mm -hmm. member portal, there's a template of that. There's several templates. In fact, Mike and I just recently did a webinar on that. And so you can get access to those there. Uh, Mike, the other thing that we're taking care of in January, somewhat related to taxes, well, everything's related to taxes, is, of course, required minimum distribution RMDs. letters. Now, remember, RMDs are changing dramatically this year, right? Previously, prior to 2023, it was believed under the new 10-year rule that you could just wait the whole 10 years. The IRS said, no, 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 no. We're not going to give up that kind of income. But in, in our graciousness, we, the IRS, will give you a <laughs> waiver for these two years where it was not clear to everyone else. Right. Uh, but beneficiaries are going to have to start taking distributions this year, even if they thought they could punt under the 10-year rule. And so we need to reach I'm, out to I'm all this. I'm still laughing about that damn 10-year rule. Oh, it's geez. like, here's the 10-year rule, but it's not really 10 years. By 10 years, we mean now and 10 years. And but, 10 but, years. but okay, whatever. All right, moving on. Moving yes, on. yeah, Sorry. yeah. But, so these, these beneficiaries, now, now, Micah, even with like, I, I'm thinking about things like when the RMD age changed from 70 to 72. That was a rel relatively recent. Right. Clients all get that wrong. I still, and I'm curious about you, I still run into clients who don't understand how the primary home exemption works. That changed 100%. like 20 years ago. 100%. And they're still saying like, hey, well, the first, this transfers if I buy, no, no, no. The first 500,000 is married couples free. Really? How long has it been that way? 20 years. Really? I mean, if you Google, Micah, right now, if you go to Google and you Google RMD tax tables, the first hit is the IRS's website, and it's the wrong it's tables. The wrong table. It's the, the wrong, wrong tables. tables. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm like on a rant here, but all of your clients with inherited accounts, they, you've got to reach out to them. A letter will not suffice. You need to send a letter as well. You need to reach out and specifically discuss with them, hey, the rule used to be this. The IRS changed it. Here's what we recommend. Here's what we're going to do on your behalf. Yeah, and I would do Ooh, both. Climb down it, it, from that soapbox. Boy, Jeez. I love it. it, it <laughs> something that's impacting Jarvis right now. You could yeah, tell. Yeah, no so, kidding. I got a ton of clients that we had, we had last year. Like, all right, listen, hey, we're gonna we're gonna hold this off five years until you sell your business. You've got this yep. million dollar IRA. It's not a big deal. It's like, oh shoot, now we got to deal with this. You know, it's one of the things that whenever there's a tax code change, you got to give yourself a little bit of leeway inside of this, right? One of the things that happened is after the Secure Act passed, we let clients know that this was pending legislation, as in we are guessing. And I said very clear, look, the IRS is not clear on what this is. Within the next 20 years, they'll probably tell us what this means, but we have to make a decision today. They're like, Micah, the IRS doesn't do that. And I was like, the IRS absolutely does that. Now, I'm going to make a guess time. today at what I think is best. And then if the IRS changes it, they're probably going to give us some grace or probably do something and we'll make those changes in the future is that going to be okay with you and they're going to be fine with that now that, that's really nice because now i get to come back to clients and guess what they're gonna say micah you're like right you told us. yep you just told like you told us, us. Yeah, this is exactly what the IRS said they were going to do, right? So I want to give myself grace whenever there's anything new that's out there. I want to make sure the clients understand that just a little bit. So RMD figures, one of the things, Jarvis, we started doing any client 65 and older is getting RMD information. Client still thinks it's at 70, right? You talked about the home exemption, yes. uh, but you know at 70, they're still thinking they're gonna have to take RMD. So at 65 is when we start talking about what that real dollar amount is. Mr. and Mrs. Client, if you were 72 today, you would be having to take out $37,000 from your IRA account. Great news, you don't have to do that until you're 72 years young, but here's our plan to minimize that in the future. And that can go right into Roth conversions. Yeah. So we do RMDs. As soon as I'm talking RMDs, I'm talking QCDs, right? Mm -hmm. Qualified charitable distributions. Now, this used to be easier, in my opinion, before TCJA, because it was easier to see if a client was charitable minded or not. Yep. Now, not so easy with the higher standard deduction, but I'm still having this conversation with every single client. Now, we've done a lot of pro tips and, and uh uh, podcasts and series on this on how to do QCDs. But I think the biggest thing, and again, we've heard about this directly from accountants that have reached out to us and says, Micah, I just absolutely love the way that your office does QCDs. We open a separate account. We nickname it as a charitable. Now, there's no such thing, in my opinion, of a charitable IRA, but we can nickname accounts. We name it charitable IRA QCD. And then what happens is on the 1099R that comes out, it says Bob Smith charitable IRA QCD. Well, guess what? When the CPA sees that, we've 
given the client a 1099 letter that says, hey, this shouldn't be taxable to you because it was given to charities. We've communicated to the CPA, and now they get that 1099-R that says it. We're like trying to go above and beyond, and we just heard that feedback that CPAs just friggin' love this. They said it's better than any other office that we deal with because we know what this money's for. And we have a checkbook that's set up for this. Really pro tip idea uh, because, in Jarvis, I stole this right from you guys, right, and getting that sticker on that checkbook that says, you know, warning, this is only for charitable use to send that money out. But I always want to have that conversation right with our RMDs. Well, I love that you mentioned uh, CPAs. January is a great time to be working with your centers of influence, right? So it's a great time to get them a copy of the 1099 letter. It's early enough. As you're listening to this right now, you've got about a week or two where you could reach out to your centers of influence and say, hey, I'd really love your feedback on this 1099 letter before we send it out. Much later than mid-January, and you really kind of start going to get your distance from the tax repairs because they're getting into tax season. But that's, again, hey, we had these QCDs. We did this Roth conversion. If there's anything you need, if Mr. and Mrs. Klein are missing any documents, yada, yada, yada when tax season gets done and you come back from vacation we'd love to chat so this is Micah where I think it exists on a spectrum right on one end of the spectrum is you know what the custodian's going to send out the 1099s I'm not going to worry about it and that's an option that is the an other option. end the other end of the spectrum is like Mr. and Mrs. Client can I get your permission to deliver the 1099s myself to your tax repair right there, there's this whole spectrum and you as an advisor need to decide hey if 2023 is going to be my best year ever how far down the spectrum am I going to go of delivering massive value you know, another thing that needs to come up too is when do you recommend your clients file their taxes? There's a difference in getting them done yep. and getting them filed, right? We want them to get in the queue to get their taxes done, get them worked on, et cetera. We don't want any of our clients to file their taxes until the very end of March, really the 1st of April. Why? Amended 1099s, those damn things, right? Um, especially when it's amended for $5 and the client's like, do I amend? Do I not amend? And it's like, absolutely not. Do not amend for $5, right? Yeah. But it's wait those for the things letter that, to come. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for the letter to come, then pay your 30 cents in tax and move on with life. Um, but those are things that are just going to come up. Now, what's a way that we can avoid this? We can set expectations with the client. It says, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you know, working with Schwab, they do a really good job of trying to get you all the tax information as soon as they can. Unfortunately, they're relying on other people getting them information. So what this means is if somebody else sends them an updated document after they've sent you a 1099, they got to send you an amended one. The best way that we can handle this is let's get your taxes done, but let's hold off on filing those returns until the first week in April. And we'll communicate with you at the last uh, week in March and let you know if we expect to have any amended 1099s. Now, the custodian can always send an amend amended 1099 years later, but at least this way we're going to get like 90% of them. Is that going to be okay with you? They're like, absolutely. My cats are really great at it. Cause you know what? I have had that amended 1099 and that's a pain in the butt. Then I got to pay for my uh, preparer to look at it. Then they have to amend the return. I got to pay for that again, all for that whopping $5 of interest. Uh, this podcast is also airing shortly before the uh, final estimated payment date, January 15th for 2022. So clients that need to be making estimated payments, this is a great time to reach out with them to them with the Retirement Tax Services Estimated Tax Payment Guide on how to make those payments electronically. Mm -hmm. Also critical, if you did Roth conversions last year for clients and did not have the taxes withheld, you need to make sure to figure out, all right, are we going to pay those now in January 15th? Uh, really, either way, Mike, you're going to warn those clients and say, hey, remember, we did this Roth conversion. We set aside $10,000 to yes. cover the taxes. Yes. W we can pay it now on the 15th of January or Mr. and Mrs. Client, depending on your discretion here. I think we can wait until March or April when you file your return. But again, we've got that money set aside. That is a reminder that you cannot make enough time. Even if you had the taxes withheld, when you're doing the 1099 letter, when you hear that they're going to go to their tax repair, remind them, hey, listen, we agreed to pay $10,000 in taxes today so that we wouldn't have to pay $20,000 in taxes at some future date when your accounts are double. You know, and this is one of the things you got to, you got to, morph this a little bit into your practice. So what's one of the things, Jarvis, is I never encourage to make a clients to make a January 15th estimated tax payment. Yeah. I want them to make it in December. I want them to make it early for that Q4 payment. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. One, when a client makes a payment, in my experience, in the next year, they don't remember what year that nope. payment was for. And then they're like, you know, Mike, I already made an estimated tax payment. I made it early. Well, how early? January. Really? Like, was that for this year or was that for the previous year? And now it starts to get confusing. So I like all tax payments to happen in the tax year, number one. Number two, and this is what I tell clients, is, is well, Mike, I want to wait till the last possible day. Well, if you want to wait till the last possible day, let's wait until you file your tax return, which is just fine. You know, they have penalties and interest. We can make sure you're penalty proof, uh, but we could wait till that. If you want to make that estimated filing early, you should really do it at the end of November and December. Why? Because the holidays are going to be upon you. You're not going to be thinking about it. Then in January, like any good Alaskan, you should be 
retreating to a place that has sun. So we're going to be in Hawaii and we're not going to follow up with you in the beginning of January. So we got to make these payments at the end of November and December to make sure your fourth quarter payment is taken care of. And they're like, you know what, Mike, that's a really good idea. And then they make those quarterly payments. So in our system, we don't wait till January. I want those payments to be done early. So I don't have to worry about that in the first quarter of the year. Boy, there's there's so many pieces here, and I want to make sure our listeners aren't getting overwhelmed, right? So we have tens of thousands of advisors, which is amazing. Listen to these episodes. The, the, there's really key is to pick one of these, right? So we talked about RMDs, we talked about estimated payments, Roth conversions, 1099 letter, and, and Michael, you and I are halfway doing halfway through the list. By the way, you're only halfway through, and you and I are doing all of these things in our practice. And, and maybe next week's episode, we'll talk about how much we each invested in personal development last year. It's a big number. Like we're trying to push the envelope on this all the time. Do not give up though. Don't lose faith and be like, well, if I can't do all 15 of these and they told me there's 15 more, I'm out. Pick one, get, get the 1099 letter out, get the RMD letter out, right? Reach out, make sure you're in connection with their tax repair. Take these one step at a time, put them on your calendar, right? Eat that proverbial frog and say, listen, on Thursdays for January, the only thing I'm going to do on Thursdays in January is work on taxes for clients. That's it. Nothing else. No updating Facebook, no plain office, just tax planning for clients. February, you can shift to the next thing, but you've got to force yourself to get these things done. Yeah, it's so important to create these forcing mechanisms. Again, what you said earlier, willpower is not enough, right? Uh, What's the date on the calendar? Then start backing into it. So our 1099 letter, by the way, um, the our head of our ops is gonna is gonna be gone. She's gonna take vacation. I didn't know we allowed vacation. That's weird. Uh, but she's yeah, taking vacation the last week in January. And so at the 1099 letter, that's when we send it out. So it's just great. It came up in our leadership meeting as we review the calendar. And one of the things on there is we have a team members' vacation dates. And she was out when a value add was supposed to go out. It's like, well, fantastic. That means it's just gonna go out early. She's like, yep, I'm on top of it. Here's all the things that we're doing kind of backing into these. So these are our suggested dates, but you got to stick them in with your team too. see how that kind of jives with them. Um, and, and by when we have the final date, that's when it has to be in the client's hand, right? Or at least out of our office, right? If we're mailing it, yeah. who knows how long that's going to take. Uh, but at least it has to be out of our office at that period in time. So we have a team member that's going to be gone. Well, fantastic. We need to accelerate things or they need to check up on it when it's gone, right? So that's the reason we want to plan our value adds out in advance. We plan our surge cycles out in advance and be like, hey, this is all hands on deck. The team needs to get these things done. So if you want to take vacation, which we're all about, right, super supportive of that, that doesn't mean you get in a, a vacation from doing your job. You still got to get these work items done. And as long as they're done, then you can go and play. Yeah, well, Micah, that rule applies to you and I as well, right? Well, so it's really, so. it's really easy for me to look and say, hey, there's a blank on the calendar. Let me schedule a speaking gig or let me go hang out with Micah or let me go do whatever. Wait a second. But if it says get value add out this week, then I know, okay, if I want to do something that week, I've got to bump that ahead. But if you were kind of just relying on willpower, like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to remember to reach out to those clients. That's not going to happen. happen. That's not, that's not real. And by the way, even if you're telling yourself, you know what? I am reliable for remembering those things. That's not a good use of your brain space, right? There is so much information you need to know as an advisor, remembering like I got to call Dave on the 13th to remind him on his estimate tax payment. That is not a good use of brain power. You know, that's something if I could rewind the clock, Please. I would be better at starting processes sooner because it was so much of like, it wasn't that big of a deal. I could just figure it out. And that was a 100% accurate statement for that time. But then as we scaled, that was no longer accurate, right? All of these other things are going on. Now we're bringing on other team members and we don't have a reliable system for getting them up to speed. So we had to create all these processes. So even if you're a, a younger or growing advisor, just saying, well, I can handle a lot of this stuff myself. You got to document it, right? At yeah. some level, you got to start documenting these things. So when you bring on other team members, then you're not having to recreate everything right then. All right, Jarvis, this podcast yep. is all about action items and implementing things that we talked about. So just kick it off for us. What's the top, what's one of the action things our listeners could do this week that would improve their practice? Yeah, Micah, you and I are tireless advocates of personal development. So something I would say you do this week is schedule your personal development and pay for it, not just put it on the counter like, hey, maybe I'll go to this, put it on the counter, pay for it, sign up for 2023 specific to taxes. Of course, I would advocate that you go to the Retirement Tax Summit, September 27th and 28th here in the lovely Las Vegas. Uh, I would get signed up for that. I would also look at other things like the Bradford Tax Letter or Natalie Choate's Retirement yeah. Tax Guide or um, things like that, but get those paid for and booked before this week ends. 
Uh, I love it. I'm going to add to that list as well the RTS Retirement Tax Services. They have their 2023 tax guide out. Oh, you need yes. to make sure that is out, printed, laminated on your desk. Every advisor gets one in our, our digital folder when we're having digital meetings, and every conference room and every advisor desk has one printed out and laminated on their desk. Why? Because these are things that are going to come up, and I want to be able to answer those questions right away. And Jarvis, I use it with clients. They're like, ooh, what is this, right? Especially when they're thinking about moving. I flip it over and I show the states and be like, hey, this is the impact that that moving here is probably going to have. So have this information uh, readily available. Have it on your desk. Have it good to go. Mike, I was at an advisor friend's office. Uh, I wouldn't need to mention his name. But he's doing about $600 million in assets. Very, very successful advisor. I walked into his conference room. The only thing on the conference room table was a laminated copy of the RTS tax guide. And I he just had it. it there. And I said, we'll call him Dave. I said, Dave, this is really cool. He says, Jarvis, I would never go into a meeting without this by my side. And this is a really smart advisor. And he's working with very sophisticated clients, very high net worth. I would never walk into a meeting without this. There wasn't a calculator on the desk. There were so many things not there. Our test tax guide was there. Uh, another action item that I would give, this goes back to your calendar. You have to have your value ads outlined, be it your tax yes. value ads, really all your value ads. When are you doing surge? When are you doing value ads? When are you following up on estimated payments? All of these things need to be blocked into your calendar or like that New Year's resolution to drink less soda pop. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, that's so funny. We just had a birthday party and the event planner was like, hey, I'm going to get a bunch of soda pop. I was like, no. no thank and you. she's like, she's like, what is that? And I was like, we don't have soda pop in the house. It was like, I think it's toxic and we shouldn't give it to kids. Anyways, side rant on that one. So, but yeah, that's the best way for we, us to prevent it is not to have it in our house and then it doesn't get consumed. Fancy way that works. Best way for me to do something is have it scheduled, have it blocked, have a third party commitment that's out there that says, hey, I'm going to do this and having other people that are going to hold me accountable is really big thing. Jarvis, as always, this is a blast. Thank you so much. I'm super excited for 2023. It's going to be epic and amazing. And to all of our advisors out there, happy planning. Happy planning. Information designed to change lives. Financial planning can make you thrive. Start today. Don't think twice.